Hello and welcome. I'm Riversoft Art, and I'm here today to talk to you about an upcoming product, DeForce to Morph. So I love DeForce. I think it's awesome that we can finally realistically drape clothing, hair, and other items in Daz Studio scenes. However, let's face it, it can be slow. Sometimes I just want to use a DeForce item in a scene without going through all the hassle of setting up the simulation, doing the set simulation, etc. And unfortunately, a lot of DeForce items don't have as many morphs to just use them as I would like. So this is what DeForce to Morph is here to help with. It will take a simulated DeForce item, take a simulation of that, and convert it into a morph that you can then use with it uh, forever after. For example, a dress. You could have a dress. You could simulate it blowing in the wind and save a morph of that blowing in the wind. And then you don't have to simulate it. Um, and these morphs are merchant resources. You can, you know, you've created a dress. You can create morphs with DeForce to Morph and you can sell them with your product. So let's get started. I have here a simu uh, simple scene. It has, it's Genesis 8 female. She's wearing a DeForce dress and a uh, jam hair, which is a DeForce hair. And this is actually a great example of an item that has morphs, but they're all about setting up a simulation, nothing about actually using them. So flip right, it puts it over here. So it can simulate, or on the shoulder, you would think it's over the shoulder to simulate. So um, yeah, that's an example. So what we're going to do first is we're going to simulate the dress. So let's turn off the simulation for the hair to speed things up. We have the dress, and we're going to make some skirt morphs, um, you know, blowing in the wind. So. For the skirt morphs, we don't want the rest of the dress to actually, you know, sag with gravity and everything else. So before we do our simulation, we need to turn that off. The simple way, if the vendor has made it that way, is to use surfaces. So you figure out which is the surface you want to affect. Here it's the dress bottom. And you can then go, okay, let me turn off. Oops everything but the dress bottom. So you turn off the dynamics. And let me change back to the universal tool. All right. So we've set it up. You could also do uh, painting weight maps, and that gives you a lot of more control, but that's way outside the scope of this. So we've set it up. We have a wind node. We're only going to affect the skirt. Uh, we're doing an animated one and then we click simulate. And usually with uh, a lot of the things you're going to do, you will use the default Genesis 8 character. You don't want, you know, special character shapes or anything and it will be in the default pose. However, you know, you can use it for stuff like a sitting pose and then, you know, and I will show that in a second. So the simulation is complete. We could select a frame, the specific frame we want to create a morph from, and we select the item and then we start DeForce to Morph. And it automatically populates with the items uh, vendor and product name suggest the path and then you can fill in a morph name and we'll do skirt win left and then you click OK and it quickly goes through and it creates a morph so now if we go back to the parameters and looked in the actor adjustments we have this skirt win left which we can dial in and out and I mentioned also that, you know, we could do it for sitting poses. I'm going to, you know, just do a quick move the legs. Uh, so this won't be, you know, 
exactly what you want, but uh, this is just to show. And then we can simulate this. Make sure I've turned off the, uh... yep, it's off. All right. And then we can simulate. I should have had it. Oops, I, let's cancel. I have the wind node on. So turn that off. And let's go from the memorized pose and simulate. And since this will take a little bit of time, I'm going to speed up the video. All right, our simulation is done. Looks good. Let's select the Isabel dress. And again, create a morph. And this time we're going to do skirt sit. And then we can look at its morphs Oops. under actor adjustments and skirt sit. So you can do that very easily. All right, let's um, turn off the skirt sit the legs back where they were. Oops, do the other leg. All right. So we're going to turn off the simulation for the dress and we're going to do the hair. So with the hair, let's see, I'm going to drape it over a shoulder, I think. So take one of their morphs. Um, all right, drape it over the right shoulder. So it's set up and we can simulate. And I'm gonna speed it up again. The hair is simulated. We've selected the uh, jam hair. We can run this. You notice it fills in a different vendor name product name and we will name this drape right I should mention that the uh, script is destructive to your scene so you should save your scene before you do it uh, it it moves the frame back to the zero frame before it engages these new morphs so it's easy to usually just you know uh, keep doing different simulations but it won't always be correct so we have the jam hair and now we have this drape right <clears throat> and there's no <clears throat> morphs engaged otherwise um, oh and another thing is that where are these morphs so if you go in Daz studio you hit f2 you get your preferences content content directory manager the first directory listed under DAS studio formats is where these morphs go and you will see like biscuits there's a biscuits jam here go down to morphs and you have your morphs so if you need to delete them or or whatever so you don't you can use Deforce to morph, not just, you know, with items on the figure. Um, we can do, it can be basically any deforce item. Though it has to be actually a saved figure slash prop asset. DAS Studio needs to know that vendor name and that product name in order to save the uh, morphs in the correct place. Here I created a simple plane and then I did figure save as support asset, figure prop asset, and then saved it as a calling it a tablecloth. So here again, we can uh, simulate what we want. I have a couple wind nodes to throw this thing around. We hit the simulation. Let's make sure it's animated. Yep. And we simulate.
and we can then go uh, what frame do we like uh, this looks pretty good we've selected the item start deforce to morph it fills in vendor and product and we can say falling one oh it already exists with this one <laughs> which it will warn you about so let's call this falling four and there it is so if we go under our actor adjustments we can see all the different morphs actually I've created for this okay I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and you'll enjoy deforce to morph uh, thank you very much uh, for watching and have a great day